what you are seeing here is a beta release of Moblin, which is Mobile Linux. This is going to be a distribution designed specifically for netbooks and mobile internet devices, which are essentially like an EPC without the, without the bottom half. Essentially, all you have is the screen. Thus, this is going to be a touch-enabled distribution, so you do not need the keyboard or the mouse at all. Excuse me. And um, on the website, which is moblin.org, you will be able to build your own distribution for your specific device, so if you're a developer and you're interested. So let's take a tour. I want to try and make this quick because last time I did it, it ran over the YouTube limit. Um, let's take a look here. We have the M zone. This is where you start off. You have your appointments, calendar entries, uh, any introduction videos, media. You got, uh, you know, your videos here. And then you have basically what your friends are doing. And then down here you have your favorite applications. And the applications in this thing are just amazing because this does cater to the power user, as you can see, through access to the terminal. You do not need to use the terminal at all to use this, though. However, I would recommend installing OpenOffice and Skype and possibly Pigeon because there are some limitations. If we go into status... All you have is Twitter. I don't see anything to I don't see any way to change that to Facebook unless now I'm still exploring this. So, you know, people. Now, this is why I think we need to switch it to Pigeon. I don't know what the heck all those W's are doing there. Um this is why we need to switch it to Pigeon because if I go into account configuration, you can see all we have is Jabber, Salute, Google Talk and IRC. We don't have anything else. And if I go into create, it'll just ask to create a new account. So that's not right. That's why I think Pigeon should be placed in on top of that. Um, Internet, we do have a full web browser. You just type in your web address. Oops. Now, this being a virtual machine is a little bit sluggish, but I think on actual hardware it won't be so bad. So here we are. We're at Moblin's website. We can also add tabs. And here you have uh, your favorite websites you view most often, so they're just available with a click. That's the um, that's the um, web browser. I, I don't know what. Let's see what this is. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's your settings. Okay, so that's where your settings are. Let's get out of here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the internet. You've got your media, which is just a regular old media browser. Uh, you can also zoom in on these pictures to see them easier, though I don't know how my, my virtual machine will handle it since a lot of the graphical features are cut off in terms of effects. And this is a little bit slow. Pasteboard is um, just your average clipboard for the entire system. You get your power options. You get your volume control right in between here. Now, this won't be smudged in when you see it. This has to do with a display resolution fluke that I'm having. Um, and I tried adjusting it. Ju it just made things worse. So I'm stuck with this. But anyway, right here, applications. You have a whole bunch of applications under settings. Let's go into assistive technology. Really quick, because I want to show you something. The GNOME screen reader and magnifier Orca is built into this thing. So this is the first uh, netbook-based Linux distribution that I've seen that comes out of the box with accessibility in mind. And I love that. Let's go back into applications. As soon as I can... Oops. See, this is the one thing I do not like about this particular setup. And again, this is a virtual machine fluke I'm having but I'm having some issues with clicking. So, your favorite applications, if you want to add or remove a favorite, you just click on the pin up here. Um, you have accessories, games, you have your internet, office, 
Now, Office is interesting because it does not come with Open Office. It comes with your calendar, contacts, and tasks. The closest thing you have to a word processor is excuse me, the text editor. Now, the text editor, I believe, is not available by default. I believe it's under accessories. The text editor is interesting. It's a word processor. It, it, it spell checks. But I haven't figured out how to put it in various formats yet. In fact, I don't even know what format it's set to by default, and it doesn't seem to give you the option to change that, at least not up front. Um, I still have quite a bit of exploring to do with this. And again, this is a beta release. Um, so, you know. But overall, thanks to the access to the terminal and the ability to install... Uh, third-party applications. It does come with a package manager. Again, you want to go back to applications. You can look through. Um, you can look through your applications, and it gives you administrative rights and everything. Um, this is this is the perfect distribution for both the power user and the novice user who's never seen Linux. You don't even need to touch the terminal. However, I would advise get getting to know the package manager because this way you can. Um, you can install a couple of applications I would recommend, which are Pigeon, Instant Messaging Client, Skype, and OpenOffice, because otherwise this is a little bit limiting in terms of those respects. Uh, your word processor is a little bit, um, like I said, I don't even know what format is set to by default, and, um, you know, you can save your document, but I have no idea what's going on there. Like I said, it doesn't give you the option for formatting. At least I haven't seen anything. Um, I still have exploring to do with this, keep in mind. Um, you want to install Pigeon if you use anything besides Google Talk, which I know most people do. Uh, you, so you do want to install Pigeon. And I would just install Skype just for the heck of it to see how it handled on the netbooks. But this is the first distribution I've seen with that caters to the power user, to the novice user, and to a user with disabilities. And I think because of this, Moblin is going to be very popular once it's once it's beyond the beta release. If you have a netbook, you can go ahead and install it right now. You just take the ISO, put it on a USB stick, and boom. Um, if you have a UMPC running one of the Intel, more powerful Intel, like the 1.2 gigahertz Centrino, that will not work. You need to have an Atom. Uh, the uh, so it's basically netbooks only or possibly virtual machines if you can get it to work if you can get it to run. Uh, this was a surprise to get it to run. I wasn't I wasn't uh, expect, expecting that. But this is really interesting, and I really do think it's. I hope it takes off because I like this a lot. Um. So, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.